Thank you guys so much. Welcome to another episode of The Wave Talk. I am your host, Michelle. Uh, we are on season two, episode six, and we have a very special episode coming up for y'all. Uh, we've got Ronnie coming through to talk to us about a few projects he's working on, um, a little bit about his life, and just what he does, you know, to be him. Um, but like I always start, I like to talk to my audience. Um, how's y'all's week been? I know it's only a Wednesday, so it's kind of a short week. How's the week been? Fast. Fast? Yeah, we got the Wednesday quick. It was like Sunday, Wednesday. Honestly, I thought yesterday was Wednesday for some reason. It's like when you don't be at work, your days feel different. Yeah, my my week has been good. I fixed up my fence by myself. Um, I got some cuts on my hand, but you know I call these battle scars. I think they're kind of cute. They build character. Um, you can't really see them, but it's okay. Um, I also started playing my keyboard last night. I'm trying to play the song Congratulations by Mac Miller. And I can get the left hand down by itself and I can get the right hand down, but I can't do them simultaneously. It's hard to play two hands, to me too. Yeah, but granted, I only practiced playing in total for two hours. So I think I'm doing pretty good, you know, to pick that up in two hours. Um, if you guys don't follow me on TikTok, you should, because I'm pretty funny sometimes. Um, it's Thicky Minaj. Isn't that kind of cool, Thicky Minaj? Uh, but I am documenting my experience from my little um, break from work. So yeah, every day I try to post something about what I'm doing differently. Um, what am I doing today? I I want to work with my embroidery machine today, but I was just telling Kira earlier, it gives me so much anxiety, so I might not do the embroidery today. Um, I may just like work on some marketing, but I don't know. It'll be productive. Uh, but let's go into our topics. Um, it's Super Bowl weekend, isn't it? Are we all excited? No? I mean, yeah, she is. And I was wondering, like, what is she going to perform? No, not yet. Mm -mm. She just got two songs from the Black Panther. I think Joe Hurts is going to win. Oh, yeah? What is that? The uh, Eagles. Eagles. Oh, yeah, I think gonna it's Eagles versus the Chiefs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to be in. I heard it's um, it's a real big deal because we have two black quarterbacks. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they had a little, yeah. they had a little yeah. story. I said he's black as he can be. He's black as he can be. Who? Patrick. Oh, got we gotta give him his quarter. Yeah. We gotta give him his quarter. Yeah, you want two niggas? We don't get two niggas. It's probably two niggas quarterbacks in the league. Man, it's probably two niggas. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we got to give him his quarter. That means Black History Month ends early for him. Sorry, Mr. Mahomes. You got to stop at the 14th, half, half a month for you. But they were making a controversy about it because um, they were doing like a highlight of all the different black quarterbacks that they've had um, in the Super Bowl, I think, or maybe just in general. But they had left out Cam Newton. Yeah. I thought that, yeah. Yeah, Right, I was like, that had to have been intentional because why would y'all leave out Cam Newton? Is he that much of like a, a rebel to the, like, is he that much of an issue? I don't think he's that controversial. I don't think he's that bad. Yeah, did they mention Connor? He was in Super Bowl too, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, everybody but Cam Newton. How did they mention Connor Kaepernick and not Cam Newton? Did they mention Connor and not Cam? Might have been. Might have been. Then they wouldn't have mentioned. Who's Colin. the overseer? You know what I'm well, saying? Who just letting Colin this shit? Gotta be more controversial than I thought so, too. Ooh. I don't know. What, what can be known? I ain't checked up on him, but what he's been on since he's been out there. I don't know. I, don't know. Yeah. I know he has, like, a little podcast that's kind he of might have said cool. Some real nigga shit. Once you get too real, they don't fuck with you. Don't you saw what happened when Nick Cannon tried to take him oh, off his little platform. So everybody had to get some real shit. You know, yeah. I was going to say Kanye, but some his stuff don't be too real. It causes for immediate removal. <laughs> before shit get too bad. I don't know. Um, I'm excited for the Super Bowl. I, again, don't know what Rihanna's going to perform. I would hope to hear um, You I Needed Me. I don't, I don't know. I mean, she's big time. I'm going to keep it a buck, yeah, though. I'm going to keep it a buck, though. Nobody will ever perform. I'll perform Beyonce. Um, Rihanna does not perform live well, unfortunately. She'll give you a good show, don't get me wrong, but she cannot sing and dance at the same time. Um, and a lot of people can't do that. And I'm just like, is that Super Bowl worthy? Wouldn't we want somebody who could do both? But, you know, she is a star. This is her comeback. 
Um, I support it. I like She's Fenty. Dope. She is dope. I don't, I don't know, I don't all know, around. Like, like even Beyonce. Beyonce is dope as hell. You know what I'm saying? It's only one Beyonce. Ain't nobody gonna perform right. her. That's right. But even her at the Super Bowl, it's like okay, that's cool. But I don't know. I feel like I gotta get people that fit more of the football. Oh, fan. what are you? What are you trying to get at? Who are you? What genre are you thinking? I don't know. You thinking white people music? Yeah, I'm not gonna. I mean, alternative music. <laughs> Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, I don't know. Why wouldn't hip hop though? Football fan is a, is a Rihanna. Fan. Mm. That's what they know it. They like, well, they mix it too thick. They know how to play it. They just try to get the money. But she's got a hell of a follow. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I got more people that probably fuck with her that don't know about football. That's true. Who gonna watch it just because of her? Exactly. It's all like they trying to get all in on people that don't watch football. So that's what they doing. They they mixing the results on purpose. But yeah, they're not catering to their fan base. It's like y'all not giving your fans. They get to watch the game. That's all you need. Damn. <laughs> Y'all get to, That's all you need. <laughs> that's all they need. <laughs> and like they did real good last year with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. And yeah. I think they need to keep it like this. Keep putting out hip hop music. Shit that people want to listen to. Because otherwise I'm turning off the yeah, halftime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You thinking, uh, no, I'm just playing. I'm about to say MGK. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and gave you the best of both worlds. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll go on to the um, next question that I have. Um, are we voting for Biden again? Do y'all even vote for the major elections? We all have. I, for one, do not currently. I only vote for the local stuff. Focus is all that is you go your vote for the county. Honestly. Oklahoma going to always be a red state. It don't matter what you vote. Hey, we know how you vote. We didn't vote every time. Hey, we did get um one blue county whenever, um whenever we was. I know, but. I mean, Oklahoma City is also always going to be blue. <laughs> and they're not having it they're not having it i don't know i brought it up because i'm like who is who's gonna run you know i was that was bringing that back up i feel like he gotta he don't matter who people vote for who the fuck else is give me every candidate they got and then you tell me which one we should vote i don't know i feel like i would go independent i would go with somebody who ain't on either party and I don't even like to vote for one way or the other because sometimes it may be like a um, a good law or something on the other side that I want to vote just, for. And I'm they, like, they, they two wings on the same bird. Mm, preach. So it don't really matter. Two wings on the same bird. You know, Y'all fly in the same direction. <laughs> what you do? Straight to the bottom. I'm just kidding. Gosh, I don't know. America does need some help. We're in debt a whole bunch. We're sending money over to Ukraine. I even forgot the Ukraine shit was happening. It ain't even real. It's not even real money. You're not getting it. We're in debt of fake money that we make. Trillions. That's back behind nothing. So what do we owe? If that's the case, they ain't debt to every fucking money. They owe us. I mean, y'all... They're not even giving like a whole bunch of money for taxes. I heard a lot of people's refunds is a lot less and I'm scared. I'm scared. I need my maximum refund. I don't want to have to owe nothing. Luckily, I've got a few businesses and that's usually what brings me up out of the hole. And I have a child as a dependent and I bought a house. However, however, I took out some money from my 401k and I feel like they're going to tax me on that. And the only reason why I'm having an issue or like um, anxiety about it, my friend has four children. She usually gets 15K back. Guess how much they gave her back this year? $4,000. Made me sick. I'm going to hope it's that. Four racks. And she used to get 15? 15 to four. I would have fell on my knee. Yeah, them pandemic taxes are different. Now they're getting it back, man. We're going to get that back. Give me that. That's fucked up, though. I was last time. Nah, but that was giving niggas extra credit, though. So I understand it. I'm hoping. Because I didn't even ask for all those details. I just heard that. And I, like, I couldn't. I was like, damn, yeah, no, I'm sorry. That hurts to hear. 
God willing, I get all my money. All right, next topic though. Um, what do y'all think the best era of music is? Like, like yes, seventies, eighties, nineties. I'm doing overall as like through the decades. Because the, what's the best era for hip hop may not be the best era for. Uh, it has to be a it has to be a compilation. You gotta like a lot of people will say nineties. Ninety off top just because of hip hop and R and B. Yeah. They peak. It was like they were chip was fire. Niggas could have dope. But. I like the seventies. I like the seventies. Yeah, I'm talking about. That's why I said it's a compilation. The music was was what it's turning to now. It was more digital. All this shit from the seventies was the hip hop. It's real music. I think the seventies off top. The seventies was actual music. And a lot of that shit is still being sampled right now, even in twenty three. It's coming from the seventies. It is. You gotta go back to where niggas play actual instruments. Yeah, Instead I vote. Talk about all music and hold. Mm hmm. Cause that's so It'll always be jazz, like that, right? All uh, of it. No matter what genre, in the seventies, they play a lot of music. I wish I could time travel. I would go back to the seventies, just cause I, I want to see. Like in the and be grown in the 70s. Yes. Yeah, I be in the yes. Like, like, shit. I want to see Marvin Gaye perform yeah, live. Yeah, they some real shit going on. I'm some trying to see Young Stevie Wonder. It's like I'm trying to see Donny Hathaway when he was still here. I just want to go to the concerts, right? I just want to go to the concerts. I'm not trying to stay. The seventies was kind of wild. I feel like seventies they was still lynching niggas, and niggas was like, "Oh shit!" I see some old school shit. I fucking stink. You said it's it's stink. Oh, that long ago in the seventies. Niggas think they whole life. Baby. I mean, niggas think oh, present they day. Sometimes oh, I, I would just about to say they be sweating. Boy, but whole time the food was different, so it probably didn't come out that poor as the same. There was lynching niggas last year, so I know it was yeah. lynching niggas in the seventies. <laughs> right, of course. Yeah, I would have to go back to the seventies mm. with, with a Right, things are a little bit different. <laughs> I'm just trying to enjoy this here show. Yeah, we ain't got to do all that. I just want to see the, the, the old recto colors in person. I, see that I would take some psychedelics. I bet you this shit was like super pure back then. Like, hit. I bet you would hit. Mm. So everything it should be priceless <laughs> man that's what i'm saying i'd make some very smart investments <laughs> way ahead of time 70s and the 80s yeah real quick <laughs> I, I got a little something that might be able to help you right let me <laughs> i believe in you if don't nobody else do Ooh, i know everything that's setting up generational wealth all <laughs> of <laughs> I get my money 85. That's the second time I heard that word today. That's crazy. That is the second time I heard that word today. I wonder if it's going to be at the parlay. Yeah. Whole time though, every anytime I heard parlay, it was either like from Desi Banks saying he's linking up with parlay or it's like I'm about to go make a parlay like a, a play, but it's a it's a bet. Now, if you got to think though, betting just became legal worldwide. Well, not worldwide, but legal like in America and shit like Oh. Master. So, something like that. Man, it ain't gonna be legal for me until we get FanDuel here, so fuck the Oh, we don't have FanDuel here? No, we can't do FanDuel or what? Um, Why? Uh, we. Well, they spend the party for the call on the dollar in March. Uh, I don't really know why. That's weird. We got all the casinos. Like, yeah, that's you betting. Also, you go to the casino and make the bet. You can do other bets. Just not on your phone. Yeah, bro. You can do it online with, like, uh, prize picks. Prize picks. It's ways around. We still bet. Other yeah. shit, but. Yeah, like, yeah. I'd rather have fan do because I can. <laughs> okay. Which is weird. I mean, we say that, but then oh, Texas so really be behind us. Texas is their own little bitch. Texas is yeah, their they, they, they could walk up out of here and be fine. Right, like, and no screw away. <laughs> I think they tried to do that. Yeah. I think, that, yeah, they tried to leave. 
You know who needs to leave? I think California really needs help. I'd be scared for California because they right there on the edge. They under constant fires. They just going to burn to death or it's going to be an earthquake and they're just going to... Everybody keeps saying that since like... Like the Pangea. I just feel like it, at any given time, I, ca I would never live. Yeah. Only it's a little less hot now. Yeah. A badass earthquake would have to be a a catastrophic 12.2. You know how the earth do stuff now. Yeah, true. Yeah, It'll definitely. snow in the summer, fuck around. <laughs> That's scary. That's real scary. Oh, but back to it. I think we all agree that seventies had the best era of music across the board. Yeah, across the board. Right. Cause seventies is it. Now it's just like, like ugly. That Sonic rebrand is ugly. And I love blue. I love blue, but I'm like, that you know wouldn't have been I it. Sonic so long like, when I drove past that shit, I said, <laughs> <laughs> it, it looked unfinished. I said, it, it finished? where's the rest? It's, it's, really, it's, really great places to go, Sonic. it's stupid. Sonic, yeah. that's ugly. Who was on yeah, y'all's team? Good. That shit's ugly. Nah, you heard it here first. They should have took a public vote. I don't want. I wonder why people don't do that. Like, Sonic, we support y'all. Kind of. It is. It is. Uh, why are they doing that? To us? It is. Uh, now, now I don't know. That was my first job. Back in the day. Back in the day, I worked off of um, the one off the highway in Dell City. Okay, so I, I signed up to skate point. and I uh -huh. skated for like my first few days and then I fell and I said, I'm not said, doing it no oh, more. Yeah, and people was like in their cars like, hey, what the fuck is you doing? And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Oh my God. I hid in the back for like most of the shift. It was terrible. I hated skating. But did y'all know that y'all are supposed to tip your Sonic waitresses? Yeah, a lot of people didn't know that, and I was only getting paid like two thirteen. So, yeah, they get paid like service. They out of pocket. Yes. Like, like, <laughs> that, 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 Sonic, Sonic is out of pocket for a lot of shit. They really are. Why would y'all do that? No lobby. You got eat outside. You want to sit up there? And eat. The only one, one that the one downtown. The one downtown. It's like it's, like it's gone. It's gone, like, it's gone, gone now. Yeah. No, you can't come in here. I got robbed by a crackhead once. For real? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, I, I, I was young, so I feel like I'm justified in my okay. actions. They have a gun or something? No, they was just he moving real fast. That nigga robbed you. No, they no, snatched it and took off. Real. They snatched yes. it. And they was. Yes. Robbery don't always have to be violent, but no, you're not catching a crackhead. You're not. Anyways, shout out to uh, Sonic and Stephen Foray, my first boss. He was a cool man. But all right, y'all, those are my topics for uh, episode six. Up next, we are about to bring on our very special guest. We've got Ronnie, so stay tuned. Cool. Yeah. Oh, what's up, what's oh. up? I ain't know these niggas here. I know how we start the episodes. We just mid conversation. Um, we've got Ronnie the filmmaker here, everybody. Welcome. I don't get no hand clubs. Well, I was about to say, look Damn, at what kind of studio audience we got here, man. <laughs> we should have had you come and see. Should have went on Wendy Williams. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Williams got her show no um. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But welcome. How are you doing today? Man, I'm chilling, you know, staying cool on the big blue couch. Okay. Y'all remember that show, The Big Blue Bear? Yeah, yeah, from I, Disney? You, in or the was the big in the big blue house? In They're the, in the big blue house. The big comfy couch was the other joint. Yes, with the with girl the clown. with the big ass shoes. Like girl, why y'all feel so big? And she had a little homie. Yeah, exactly. Aww. Okay. Anyways, whenever I ask my people how are you, I mean like truly, are you anxious? Are you content? Are you at peace? How are you feeling? Uh, passionate. Oh, passionate. Yeah. What's got you so passionate right now? Uh, really, just my next project and trying to figure out uh, how to get Oklahoma companies and legislation to pay attention to film a little more and make something for the local filmmakers. There's a lot of stuff for senators for like out of town productions, mm -hmm. you know, you can get a rebate, whatever, yada, yada. But like, what are you doing for the local filmmakers? It's cool to have you know local people work on these big shows. Cool, don't don't get me wrong, I've done it and I do mm -hmm. it. But it needs to be some type of like grant or program where you can 
help a local filmmaker make his vision come to because mm -hmm. his vision is the one that's going to truly represent or his or her vision right. is going to truly represent where they're from you know what i'm saying so and the only way we can grow is we highlight our own shit is that something that you're working towards creating uh yeah i'm i'm working towards it by doing doing it by example you okay. know what I'm saying getting these yeah. companies to fuck with me then i do something and it's like okay well i have more resources i can like tell like yo this is another filmmaker I can introduce them you know just kind of a ripple effect till maybe we can get something in legislators well this is a such and such grant mm -hmm. for like filmmakers or first time filmmakers is ten thousand dollars shoot your first short film or you know something like that i would love to be a part of something like that in the future though and there's obviously potential here they're bringing all these other projects here to oklahoma that's what i'm saying you it's know so why not pimping us out right and then don't want to give us yeah. down here paying us rations they, to be in their show man uh that was a fun show to do tulsa king oh you were, you did that yeah, yeah okay so let's go back how long have you been in production as far as filmmaking? Uh, I've been doing stuff with the homies since like 2014, Ooh. I think. Oh, we were just doing our own little things. Mm -hmm. uh, Devoted Media Group, shout out to the homies. Um, they just released the, uh, my homies that's in my group, uh, Video Hero and Nicole, Jacqueline. They just released a, uh, a black cowboy documentary called Riding Legacy. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen that, I'm pretty sure they'll be showing it soon. You should definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, I, I'm in a group with them, and we've been doing stuff since 2014. and um as far as like big stuff i did my first big one in 2021 with the killers of the fire moon okay. uh and then this year or this past year i did tulsa king and i shot my first short in 2021 while on killers of the fire moon mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh right now i'm just working on getting securing funding for my next project which is stassi baby yes okay we're gonna get into that um now have there been any mistakes that you've made along the way that you wish you would have known prior I mean, yeah, I wish I would have known fucking more about film shit when I was maybe 17, 18. Mm. You know, I probably would have yeah, never went to, to school just to go to school because that's what you do. I, uh, I would have just fucking bought a camera and just started doing it. But I didn't know how. Because I was a kid, I was like, watch movies all the time because my mom, she's always at work. So I was like, how the fuck do they make this shit? And then eventually through life, I that manifestation of figuring out how they made it and just ran with the information, honestly. <laughs> and that's really what just got you jump started into filmmaking, you just wonder and just curiosity. Yeah, like curiosity as a kid and like going to movies a lot and like really loving movies and then we're like, yeah, how the fuck they make this shit though? And then you start making it and you're like, okay, but me just having DSLR camera shooting this is not gonna make it. You gotta know about mm -hmm. post-production and color grading and color science and, shot angles and all these different things to make the story what it is so it's like okay then you get down to it oh my gosh i don't even know what a lot of those terms mean <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay i'm not in filmmaking um what school did you go to and what'd you go to school for uh well i went to uco first hey, i was uco too for psychology Ooh. and then uh I went to I went to go uh, hoop at the JUCO in uh, Maryland, mm -hmm. and at Frederick C C Frederick Community College, and then after I did that, I came back and went to Oklahoma State, mm -hmm. OSU OKC, mm -hmm. and then after that, I was like, I don't need this shit. <laughs> like I'm just wasting time and money. Yeah. Like I can go do some other shit, and then I decided to just focus on my art shit. Now you do filmmaking, but you also do music as well. Or you did? I don't know if you still current. You're also a musician. I, yeah, I get that a lot these days. It's like, so you making any music? Yeah. But I, I work on music every day. Okay. Every day. Um, as far as I just ain't finished what I'm working on, mm -hmm. honestly. And when I finish, I'll put it out. Okay. Is uh, that more of a passive, passionate right now? Um, it's more of a got to get it how I want it. Mm -hmm. and having the time to get how i want it and me filming stuff is kind of always kind of conflicting so makes sense it's gonna be a time this year though i'm gonna uh, get in the studio re-record all the songs i got like 200 songs recorded Sheesh. it's like really just picking the songs and going to re-record them and getting the features right that's a lot to have built up does it normally take you a long time to is that just over the years or how long did it take you to get that uh that's since yeah, now that I've had songs for this particular project since like 2017, 18. So you do the soundtrack 
Is that what you're saying? You said for this part? Oh, oh for the music part. Oh, right. well, no, on my first short film, I actually only made the short film because mm -hmm. I released a music project and I wanted to not shoot music videos. That's so neat. I just made a short film. And I scored it with the uh, the music with the film. Yeah. That's tight. Did you take, have you taken any of your films to like any music, not music, but any film festivals? Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. So I did, I answered maybe like 20 or 30 festivals, got in maybe like five or six. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, recently talking to my homie. He was like, yeah, you got to like enter like 300 of them hoes so you can mm -hmm. get like 40, 50. I didn't know. I was like, oh, okay. So got to shoot for the stars more. So on the next film, we actually have a budget to submit to festivals because it costs. It does cause. How do you come together with your production team? Because you need a lot of moving parts to put on a film. And that's uh, mainly from like just working on production because there's a lot of people that, uh, that are good in the local community that end up working on a show with me or mm -hmm. a movie with me. And then I'm networking and like boom. And then next thing you know, when I shot mine, I got basically everybody I didn't work with already helping me with my project. That's the key thing about building connections and networking to get you a lot further than money than can. Any, yeah, basically. Networking is is like the most valuable thing. Like if you got a good connection, you don't even there's people out here that got great connections with no money, but they can do whatever they want. <laughs> That's true. So it's like you gotta gotta have a will to do that for sure. Yeah, you do. Um who are your inspirations in the film industry? Uh I'll say, of course, Spike Lee. I fuck with Spike. We love Malcolm Spike X Lee. is probably one of the greatest movies ever. Um, uh, of course, Martin Scorsese. Mm -hmm. Got the pleasure of working with him on one of my first big wow. films. That's neat. Uh, I like Brian De Palma. He's a director. He did like Scarface, mm -hmm. Carlito's Way, mm -hmm. uh, Sisters, Carrie, um, Blowout. Uh, who else? Brian? Oh, of course. Quentin Tarantino. Um, his Jackie Brown movie really made me want to battle certain topics with black women as far mm -hmm. as like having them as the lead. I was just like, damn, I like her at the lead. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We, we got black women movies in their leads, but the, the stories be like, eh, eh. And then you got the why do you get married and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. is cool. But I, I feel like it's a, it's a pocket for black women to have a little more story presence on screen. Yeah. I like how you put that. Yeah. And I think, um, does that lead into your new project, Stassi Baby? Uh, and my last one too. So my and last one uh, was basically about a girl that ghost write for a guy a rapper, mm -hmm. which they, and she's friends with him, but mm -hmm. her dad don't like her being friends with like three guys. And he basically on a night out, he catches, catches her out or with, uh, with them. Mm -hmm. And then basically when they go to the studio and they end up having sex, whatever, and then taking her home, her dad is waiting on her, and mm -hmm. then he basically beat on her. And then, <laughs> I know it sounds bad, it sounds, but uh, it like that, plot. that prevents her from going to his first show, and he's kind of on like, you can't trust nobody these days, because mm -hmm. he doesn't know that she just went through some domestic, basically shit with her father. Right. Yeah, and that's how I ended it, because. Why would you end it like Because it's that? a short film. It's yeah, like, you only. Like that is so frustrating. People told me when, when I was screening it, because I had two screenings <laughs> for it. They was like, so what happens? I was like, bro, it's a short film. I say, if, really, if people really want to know what happened, they give you money to make what happened. Like, if you ever had the opportunity, would you revisit some of those short films and extend them? No, because <gasps> like the way I make movies, all of the movies are part of the same world. Okay. So what's going on is my next one, Stassi Baby, is like one of the characters maybe related to the girl. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like so. It's, I like stuff like yeah. that. I think. Um, what was it? Knocked up. And yeah, because they do it. Yeah, them. Yes, they, and then Fifty Cent does it. And then of course Marvel. Yeah, the Marvel universe. Exactly. Right. So I was like, I why like not? Stuff like that, yeah. making stuff with intent. But. That's still frustrating though. That's like what um, Issa Rae did with Instagram. Hey, she you, just cut it off and like, you think that's rest? frustrating? Like, wait till she sees Stassi Baby. That's Let's crazy. talk about Stassi Baby. Who is Stassi Baby? Stassi is a girl that's just going through the world, coping, you know, with the, how life been treating her through her, her uh, addiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, she's she's lonely, but she she's she's a realist for sure. Um, but it's really or originated from a feature film me, uh, my girl, and the co-wrote. 
about these women in a mental hospital. Mm. And it's a full feature. It's going to cost like $3 million to shoot that because it's like 120 pages. Sit on uh, it. Let's go. Let's so I was like, well, shit, I can't do that right now, mm -hmm. but I got to do something. So I took one of the characters that I liked the most out of the mental hospital mm -hmm. and kind of wrote her backstory. Kind of like a, it's like a traumatic day that kind of leads up to why she would even end up in the mental hospital, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So basically we just go through a day with her and, and as events uh, transpire, she gets in a situation where she has to choose as her friend or herself. Mm -hmm. Granted, she's the type of girl that doesn't mind dying young, so, you know, but you'd be kind of surprised what she chooses at the end, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm so invested. I literally cannot wait. So mm -hmm. how did you go through the process of picking your characters and the people who play them? So, uh, you know, I'm a stickler for like working with people in Oklahoma City mm -hmm. and like people that I think like, yo, they look good on screen. You know, mm -hmm. if they want to send in the audition tape, mm -hmm. I'm going to watch it and me and my crew, we're going to watch it. And if it's great, I would rather work with somebody here and then give them a chance to become something they probably never thought they could be, you right. know what I'm saying? Then somebody might, we might take it to a festival and a producer's like, man, I love this film, but that, the star, mm -hmm. well, like, we want to work with her, I need her for my next film. And then next thing you know, that person's in Aww, stuff right. going down, it's like, damn, yeah. That's the same way with Spike, like Spike, Martin Lawrence, that was his first movie, uh, really? Do the Right Thing. I didn't know that. So, so it was like, just having that type of mindset. And then of course my girl and Nicole, they helped me vet out like what they thought was great. You know, they really helped out in the cast and on that one for sure. Yes, um, if you guys haven't seen the promo, which I'm sure you have, I really like how y'all have it set up, how everybody's come in on the couch. Um, it really is exciting. I can't wait to see that. So I know you're in the process of raising funds. What are you doing specifically to do so? Are there events that we can attend? Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to think about that yeah, one. Yeah, oh. some fundraising tactics. Yeah, for sure. Uh, honestly, uh, I've just been doing a lot of back end mm -hmm. as far as, uh, of course, I started to go find me for like, you know, anybody, anybody can donate because mm -hmm. we're trying to reach s roughly 70,000. Okay. Um, but uh, I've been talking to a lot of companies and businesses and uh, I got an investor the other day that literally last week is going to give us 15,000. Oh, wow. And then uh, I'm just really just been having meetings with different companies and trying to see where I can fit in because think about film stuff bro if you find the right rich person mm -hmm. they they can use a tax write-off you know what I'm saying so it's like they, if it's the right company they like you say what 50,000 mm. and then they might we might align together and the CEO of the company I might might like me and it's like yeah we can write this off boom and then you're there's your money you know what I'm saying then you go create what you're gonna create and then use that as leverage to get more money from the next venture you know it's just Rinse and repeat type thing. Rinse and repeat. I like the the rinse and repeat. That's that's real. You could meet somebody and he just like it's, it's take care. It's, it's possible. Lot, it's a lot of possibility. You just got to be out, you know, networking and like like I probably met like over twenty new people in the last two weeks just because wow. I've been out going to things I see on on Instagram or so. Like oh like it's some thing this Friday like artists Oklahoma artists coalition and shit I'm like mm -hmm. visual arts I'm like shit I'm going there it's right. a meet and greet why wouldn't I want to meet why not and then I meet with filmmakers every month you know what I'm saying like that's half the people that's gonna help me shoot it mm -hmm. so I'm just like I'm just staying tapped in the community because what I I just wanted to grow and I feel like if ain't nobody else gonna do it I'm gonna do it might <laughs> as well be the change you want to see man for real because we can't just sit around and wait on people bro I just, ugh, that's the you'll get piece. nothing done yeah, bro. i've done that several times and it's gotten nowhere exactly. Most time you look up and I could have done this move. <laughs> and let them move so but, you're needing 70k well mm. that's just the overall budget what does the budget go to specifically is that like the, the crew the materials it goes to the crew uh so the crew get paid you know something i, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna have like hella bread to get niggas but right. <laughs> they can get something for, mm -hmm. for their time uh that goes to equipment like lights cameras because we're gonna be shooting on film mm -hmm. um and then uh, like condors to put lights on uh like some type of crane so you can put the camera on to do these certain shots of uh, catering yeah uh, crafty post-production sound um festival entry so when we get done and edit it and that goes to editor too. Uh, mm -hmm. When we get done to edit it, we can actually put it 
in front of people and get it to where someone might see this and might, might you know, because I want to paint it in a way where you're going to know it's Oklahoma City and you're going right. to be happy like, oh, no, I'm going to make Oklahoma City look good as far as like what I envision it's going to look like. So That's what I'm noticing about a lot of people in the industry as far as like filmmaking, music, um, mo models, anything. Everybody wants to keep it like Oklahoma. And I really love that for us because yeah. somebody's got to, it's got to pop. It's going to. And I, mean, I feel like everybody is moving all at the same time. Mm. It's just about to be a big old combustion. I hope so, man. Yeah, like you said, like anywhere in civilization, like yeah. you, for that particular region or city to do something, it's always the people that's in it. Mm -hmm. highlighting it and then the people that the powers that be that, that are have control of it have to uplift those people you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so it can be a thing where the common people be like oh yeah like it's like you listen to this white local and then listen to Kendrick people in LA gonna bump Kendrick because he's from LA yes that's a fact we gonna bump him because he dope so if we can bump somebody here because they from Oklahoma people gonna bump him out there because they dope now why do we think it's so difficult for Oklahoma to be like that it's just a small, small market, you know, yeah. it's, it's more, it's more chances you to run into somebody that, you know, um, make something, then your homie might make something. So it's not that you don't focus on it, it's just like, you up in your mm -hmm. homie, everybody up in their homie, and it's just like, it is what it is, bro. Right, so I like your perspective, because a lot of people make it seem like it's being done intentionally. Nah, Versus nah. just, this is what, this is our environment, this is I don't what we're think working with. No one has intentions to, to not fuck with people as far as like their music shit, just like, it might not even affect them or they might not like it as far as like uh what they into like right. yeah, that's everybody ain't man, going everybody ain't going stuff, into that's your okay. shit so it's, it's fine though like if they supporting somebody on the scene that's a win because it's the scene that really matters that's such a great perspective to see if they're supporting somebody on the scene a win is a win a win is a win for everybody just like you said you like to use local people in your films who knows somebody can see that person in the film and put them in something else. Facts, facts. And I work with a lot of film people that might need, you know, like different people. And so, I mean, I'm just here. I just <laughs> take it day by day, smoke a little weed, work on little projects, and uh, stay out the way, shit. What is your target day? Do you have one? Or is it something that you'd like to hit by? I would like to uh, be shooting at the end of April, okay. honestly. How long does it take you to shoot a short film, I, I think? My last one. <laughs> Because uh, I was working on Killers of the Flower Moon at the time, so mm -hmm. I had to literally take off a Friday and shoot Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And literally didn't get done to like 5 o'clock Monday morning Dang. and went straight to set. Wow. Yeah, but it was worth it though. That's determination. During the time, were you also working like regular jobs or you've just been mainly... Oh, you've just been uh, mainly... Mainly production, like, because mm -hmm. when I'm not doing my own thing, I'm working in the set lighting on a bigger show. That's so I'm good. still doing film You're stuff, yeah. It. So, like, most of the time, I just be on set. That's how I wrote Stassi Baby on Tulsa King. In between those lighting scenes, I was just writing the t uh, Stassi Baby. You, must, you get that much time? Yeah, because, yeah, like, once we set up, like, it depends. Like, they, depends on what type of, if we set up looking this way, you know, it depends on if we on set, on location. It's, it's variable. Mm -hmm. Um, but if we in a certain spot, like on stage, I know I got time. I can pull mm -hmm. out the laptop before we finna move around and move some lights around. And sometimes we don't make too big of adjustments because we got lights up in the ceiling. We might just be panning stuff and cutting stuff then. That's it. That's not like a pretty simple job. I, I mean, mean, of it, course, if you know what you're doing. Yeah, nah, it's, it's really just about knowing the tools that you have at your disposal. How long would you say that it takes to shoot a single scene? Because I know that people have to rehearse them same lines and like, all right, like, do y'all have to record it once, move the camera, record it again just to get it from like different angles? Yeah, if it's not a two camera setup, yeah, I, what I personally do uh, when I shoot, I shoot the whole scene from one angle. Mm -hmm. So if I like, so if we was talking right here, I would shoot the whole scene from a wide, <clears throat> Wide angle part, which is probably what we're on right now. Right. Then I would do probably like a one from over here looking oh. at you, then one from over there <laughs> looking at me, you know what I'm saying? And we'd have to... And then you can just cut in between like with a certain points, you know what I'm saying? Have you been the editor for your projects or do you let somebody else take care? Oh, no. <laughs> I ain't got time, bro. Like, I'd rather be <laughs> trying to work on something new or a new idea than... I like, i go be in the editing room, you know, work with my editor, but mm -hmm. nah, I don't, I don't edit. 
I could add, add it, but I'm, there's no point. It's like, it makes sense. you what, literally have people to do that it. for you. If somebody else do it. Yeah. How many moving parts do you have in your crew? Like, you've got an editor, you're the film, like, like, what are the branches, what are the pieces? So, like, when you're making something, it's going to be director, mm -hmm. then it's going to be the DP, which is the director of photography. On my last one, I directed and was DP. Basically, just controller, like, camera placement and movement and stuff like that. Uh, according to the director's likes, of course. Then you got a gaffer, which is the guy that the DP works with, with the lights. And then it's the key grip, which is the gaffer's homie, basically, which he helps shade the light, like that right there. Mm -hmm. The light would be the gaffer job, and mm -hmm. the diffusion would be the grip's job, which is the key grip. <laughs> wow. Then you got your <laughs> art and set dressing, which they make sure, like, you know, we got everything looking, and then mm -hmm. props. If you got something in my hands, you're going to hand you those props, mm -hmm. like a gun or something. Then you got, uh, what else you got? Camera department, of course. Uh, the guys that work with the DP. Mm -hmm. uh, then you got locations. Somebody got to find a spot you're going to shoot in. or uh, Then you got transportation, which people yeah. got to move this shit. That's true. Um, those are, and then of course you got the office accounts and stuff like that. But those are the main ones that help get the stuff shot. My gosh, it's so much more than... Oh, costumes, I, wardrobe. Co wardrobe. Yeah, you gotta have a stylist, man. It's like he's reading my mind. I was just about to ask you, as far as wardrobe, are you intentional as to what you put the people in as far as, like, are you doing local brands? Are you staying away from any major brands? Uh, what honestly, are you trying to get your audience to see? The main, like, in the last one, we had two pieces by, uh, on a Chanel. I love Miss Chanel, Harris. she has two pieces in the She's last so one. She's y'all. She's going to actually design Stassi's uh, main two outfits and yes. then her friend Izzy's outfit. I'm not really concerned about the, the guys in it because it's not mm -hmm. really about the guys. But we're going to probably pull from um, some boutiques that I have a relationship with. So we just pull those clothes from them. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, nah, it's definitely got to be... Right, you know what I'm saying? That's what me and Chanel was talking about. And my girl, like, not too long ago, like, mm -hmm. Stassi's look. What is your girl's name? You want to give her a shout out? It's funny. She's like, hey, I you gonna, can you want to shout me and the dog out? I was like, yeah, bro, it's good. Shout out to Jay Boog and Roxy. Aww. Shout out, guys. That's so sweet. Mm -mm. I love black love. Now, usually whenever I do my interviews, I like to ask my guests um, a few series of questions, like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Okay. So I've got a few questions for you, if you don't do mind. Do geography. I'm good at geography. Uh, geography? Yeah, I'm good That's at That's so crazy. I happen to have a geography question. That's so crazy. All right, we'll see. No, no, we'll see. <laughs> Everybody is like, they're either like really excited because they think that they got it or, all right, Maine borders which U.S. state? Maine with the lobsters. So I, I, I want to say Vermont, but I'm not for sure, honestly, because I haven't looked at the map in a long time. Okay, let me see. Maine mm -hmm. borders which U.S. state? Mm -hmm. now, that's the top state. Where is Vermont at? It's in the area. I don't know if it's below it or not, though. It is in the area. Uh, but if it's not Vermont, because Vermont might be on the side. Vermont is on the side. Uh, then that means Massachusetts. No? Uh, hold on. If it's not Vermont. Oh, New York. Is that your final answer? Uh. <laughs> you can ask the audience for help if you want to. What y'all think? I want to say Connecticut. Connecticut. No, nah, that might be it because Boston. Maine borders which U.S. Yes. state? But then New York is, is New York, but it might That's be. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I want to say Connecticut. All right, so I'm going to go Connecticut. I'm going to go you Connecticut. You got two Connecticut? Yeah. Maine only borders one state. That's right. Which one is it? <laughs> which is What is it? New Hampshire. New ha I forgot about that funky <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> right. Damn, I forgot. <laughs> it's a lot of states like that. I'm like, they're all so tiny. Why is that even a state? It's so tiny. Like, they're all like, like I forgot about. Same it's same a cluster. Hey, right. shout out to all the color folks in New Hampshire, dog. Right, I know y'all out there. There gotta be some of y'all out there. What's in New Hampshire? Is there any like important landmarks that we know of? It's, it's, over, there. it's, it's over, there. over there. It's over there. It's over there. <laughs> 
Basically, it's New York. So, like, it's all of it is country, New York. Country New York. <laughs> That's all it is. Like, I don't even know where Rhode Island, Island is. It's so tiny. Time. Rhode Island is next to Delaware. Oh, because I used to stay in Maryland, so I, okay. I've, I've been over there. Yeah, like, I, it's it's over there. Are you but that's with people? all that stuff is north. Like so, if you Maryland, like you got Pennsylvania right there top. Then it's like Philly, because I remember I rode the bus from Maryland to New York. Uh, then you go to Philly. Then I remember going to Jersey and New York. But I never went farther than New York City. Like, how long was the ride from Maryland to like New York? Like three and a half hours. Oh, that's the Dallas. Yeah, that's, that's it, was, it, was, it was like going to Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> All those states are like literally one, they're close. Like a, one little tunnel that they that they that connects that they that everybody hates. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know that. I've never been I've been everywhere down south, but I've never been east. Yeah, no New York City changed your life. I'm going to see Ari Linux and I'm super excited. Nice. For the first time I'm gonna be in New York. But let's get to another question. Mm -hmm. I feel like you'll be able to get this one. Whose picture is on the five dollar bill? And to the guy that supposedly freed the slaves. That's right. Go ahead and say his name for the people. Abraham Stinkin Lincoln. That's right. Heavy on supposedly. You know I mean? Heavy on the supposedly. Heavy on the supposedly. <laughs> Can't trust them. You know how they teach. Okay. Um, let me see. How many teaspoons are in five tablespoons? Come on, bro. I don't cook. <laughs> how many teaspoons in a what? He's five. How many teaspoons are know. in five tablespoons? Well, the only way uh, the only way I can figure out this calculation is to find out how many teaspoons is in a tablespoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? I can't do the math. <laughs> that okay. would be too easy. Ten. You're close. Twelve. You're super close. Thirteen. You're right on the money. Fourteen. It's fifteen. It's fifteen. So that means. Three. That's right. Mm. Yeah. So you would have gave me that three. I know. That's why I said I couldn't <laughs> tell you. Okay. When I'm be using tablespoons. At that point, you just eyeball it. I eyeball no, perp. Like I'm not you, jerks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eyeballing tablespoons and teaspoons. I'm eyeballing I'm everything. Mixed up, honestly. But it can make a difference. Mm. Yeah, if, you, if you need a table, I mean, if you need a teaspoon, and you put yeah. a tablespoon or something, you are over. Yeah, you over fucking some salt. Yeah, you can't do that. Oh, yeah. Definitely, I was sold. Mm. I, I would, too. I was talking to her about that. We're about to try and make our own seasonings. Try, I thought you We're about to make our own <laughs> seasonings. I do it. You feel it, too. Oh, my gosh, the pressure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know you said you like geography, but I feel like this might be a little bit too difficult. Oh. Go ahead. Go. No, no, do me. Okay. If it's difficult, let America figure it out. Sure. <laughs> All right. In what U.S. city do the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers meet and form Ohio River? <laughs> it's Allegheny, A L L E G H E N Y. And what city does they meet? Yeah, in what Ohio. City? To make the Ohio. No, River. Okay, to go. make yeah to make the Ohio River. But what city do they meet? Okay. Can I, is it a major city in Ohio? Um, no. Okay, it's it's, but it's not a country city in uh, Ohio either, huh? It ain't no country town, but it's not a major city. You're right. Okay. All right. Because there's only two major cities in Ohio, and that's Cincinnati and uh, Cleveland. So you got to be Akron. But the but, answer is not in Ohio. Oh, it's not in Ohio. No, okay, so they meet and form the Ohio River. Did the state that the city in touch is Ohio? Yes. Okay. So you got what? Kentucky, Illinois. Uh, is Illinois touching Cleveland? No, I don't think. No, Illinois is not touching Cleveland. I mean, Ohio. Uh. Hmm. I got it pulled up for any of y'all who think I'm making stuff up. I got it pulled up. I'm looking at it now. I believe y'all. Why? Right, what state is it? Because it don't matter if it's telling me it's Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? You got to think of where the Ohio River is. Yeah, because Pennsylvania is over there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's probably some bum fuck town, too. It's, it's really not, though. That's it's the not, It's not. It's not. So if it's in Pennsylvania, it's not a bum fuck town. Pittsburgh. It is. Okay. You're correct. Yeah. <laughs> you I was got like, it. Okay. 
like Pittsburgh is a big town, though. It is, yeah. it is. But yeah. you said in Ohio. Oh, uh, you. Mm. And I said, no, it's not in Ohio. You gotta be specific. <laughs> you gotta, gotta be specific. Okay, I'm gonna give you one more. You did. I didn't think he was gonna get that. Man, cause you doubted me. You can't be doubting me in front of these people. When he said he was good, we had somebody on here who said that was good. No, I'm See? saying he got a few right. We're not gonna be mean. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, let's see. Mm-mm-mm-mm. I gotta go back to the drawing board because if you got that one right, I thought it was gonna be hard. I'm gonna give you a riddle. I'm going to give you a riddle. Nice. I've been I've been doing riddles lately, <laughs> and people love them. So let's see. Oh, no, now you got to think outside the box on these because I don't get like the the regular ones. Okay. Riddle me that. Why Ted's wings not open the photo? <laughs> I was thinking, but I was like, nigga, I was like, damn. We I was talking some, about it past some wings here. on the way home. I was like, them niggas is funky, you know, open up the pub. I'm salty, no motherfucker. Okay, like, now this is easy. I am easy to lift, but hard to throw. What am I? Easy to lift. Mm-hmm. Easy to lift. <laughs> hard to throw. These <laughs> hands. Uh, can I get some hints? Uh, I feel like... The hint is the answer. No, um, easy to lift, hard to throw. throw. Um, how can I give a hint? Is it a that? thing? It is a thing. It is an object. It's an object. Yep. Um, is it an object that I use on my everyday? Mm, no. No, I don't think so. Okay. Where can I encounter this object? Oh, it's gonna give it away. Mm. Um. <laughs> It's literally going to give it away. Okay, okay. Easy to lift, but hard to throw. Mm-hmm. That ass. <laughs> <laughs> I just know it. No, that's never hard to throw. <laughs> for some people. <laughs> right. for oh, my God. I, I don't know. Hey, it's something up. simple. Yeah, it God. is. Yeah, what is y'all, it? Y'all think, huh? I don't even know. I'm really over here. It's a feather. You cannot ah. see how a feather <laughs> It's gonna fly right back at you. Easy All right, with. running bull over here with the native. <laughs> it's a riddle. It's, it's, the native riddles. <laughs> I, I give you that. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? I don't want to throw it literally. It ain't yeah. gonna go nowhere. Right. It's hard to well nowhere. throw it like at a far distance. It should say that. Mm, you can see, throw it. It's not gonna go nowhere. Exactly. Cause you can't throw it. That's it's right. not hard to throw it. It just. Yeah, it's hard to control the throw. Hey guys, I don't make the riddles. <laughs> No, I'm fucking you know, I said think outside the, the box. Yeah, I would never thought that. Okay. Yeah, I would. Good. Right. Good. I'm probably gonna have to add that along with the question since everybody thinks they're smarter than the fifth grader. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah we're gonna have to bring those back. Um, I like to also ask everybody who are your top five favorite artists of all time across any. I'm gonna give you across any genre, or you can pick one. It's up to you. I'm gonna give them two options. That's a person who's. Because my music text is just everywhere, so that's easy for me. Cause that's that's what I'm saying. Because I listen to yeah. shit like that all the time. Like, okay. Shade. Okay. Is it? Um. Da da da. Da da da. Oh man, that's been oh. hard. Right. Um, oh. Kung Fu Kenny. Okay, of course. He's probably like the. He's Michael Jackson of rap. Honestly. Did you see him whenever he was here? I did. Did you enjoy yeah, the show? I did. I saw him out in Miami at Rolling Loud. Oh, shit. Sure. Oh, it was such a treat. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. King Kendrick, Kendrick Show Day. Mm hmm. <sighs> Three more artists that. She waiting to hear one. I don't know it. <laughs> the way she over there leaned in, she, she waiting to hear one. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Uh huh. Oh, wait, 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 w
My audience is taking them, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, that's two. I need three mm -hmm. more. And it's really tough because, like, for me, it's like, yeah, you said art in which I'm, I don't even care to be listening to rap, bro. Like, there's not that many rap artists that are that good, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it don't gotta be just rap, but it's just a lot of music. It's a lot of music to pick from. When we say artists, are you already just talking music? Because you are a filmmaker. You do have different forms of art. Go ahead. It's your world. It's your world. Okay, right? I'll, I'll say if I, I'm going to just include anybody that makes art, you know, whether, okay. whatever medium it is, you know what I'm okay. saying? So, yeah, we'll definitely go uh, Sade, Kendrick, Morris Scorsese. Mm hmm. Uh, two more. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Mm, I'm just trying to think. I'm going through my roller decks. The roller deck. Because I want to. This is this is permanent, man. It's for life, eh? It's solidified after he says that. Exactly. Final exactly. You're exactly. not going back, but you can give us honorable mention if you want, though. Ah, uh, no, that's too much. Hey. I like his style. Um, <laughs> fuck. I'm going to say Quinn Tarantino, okay. another filmmaker. Mm -hmm. That's four. Oh, that's last and this last one will be music for sure. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no, no. no. I'm, 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 I promise y'all probably gonna, not going to say nowhere near exactly. what you want me to say. Of course he's not. I'm just um, curious. It's just this last one. It's like, who would I consider that I personally fuck with? You know what I'm saying? It's a lot yeah. of niggas I know are great. Like, you know, it's Prince and Michael Jackson. Them niggas is cold. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, but as far as Still me. Still might not even be in your top five, though. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I will have to go with Marvin Gaye. That's a good answer. Yeah. I love Marvin. I was just telling, yeah. I would love to see him perform live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you said that earlier, yeah. Like, yeah. it's just something about, he picked Marvin Gaye for his last one. Uh, yeah. Can't go wrong, Marvin. Martin Scorsese and then uh, Quentin Tarantino. I had to write up mm. Marvin Gaye in college. You did? Oh, uh, what'd you write about? I wrote about um, what's going on LP. What's going on? That whole LP. No, he was a, that was the first um, actual LP created. Mm. Really? It was What's long the as hell. What's the difference between an LP and an album? What, what is an LP? It's an album and an EP. Marvin Gaye created the first LP. Longest, long ass fuck. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, gonna play I'm trying to think of rappers that could have made that. I just can't. No? Right. You got Only Kendrick. other rapper, Ice Cube. Okay. Ice Cube, now I want to know your other three. Oh, oh, just rap all rappers? Yeah. Uh, Kendrick, Ice Cube. We ain't never had nobody say Ice Cube. I like that. I love Ice, Ice Cube. Cube. Uh, I love dude, his Ice first Cube. three, four albums are crazy. Yeah, they still get played right now. Right. Um, and then for the whole group. Right Nipsey. Nipsey, okay. There's a lot of West Coast shit. Damn. Mm -hmm. That's uh, three West Coast. Hey, man, we really are. It's like a pipeline. Jay Z. Okay. Opposite side. Oh, this is like oh, that no. nigga is. You low key sound like him. Have yeah, you been told that before? I've been told before. Okay. I think so. I'm like, he sounds uh, like him. Yeah, he sounds uh, like him. <laughs> who else? Hove, Cube, Kendrick. That's three? No, you, you got one who more. Else, who else? I'm saying. Ho, Kendrick, Ice Cube, Nipsey. Nipsey, Nipsey. Nipsey. I can't forget Nip. Um, and then one more. Diamond. <laughs> Diamond. Uh, Diamond. Chris McCain. Oh, no, I really should. Yeah. In the top five, we got an episode coming out with him. Yeah, that's. That's supposed to be coming out next. We love Chris. Yeah, I fuck with this one nigga. He's so talented. Yeah, How man. long have y'all been knowing each other? I've been knowing Chris since I was like, like 13. Uh -huh. That's fucking, real connection. Yeah, no. My uncle used to have this like this place called the Shack. Mm -hmm. That's where I used to play niggas with Madden for money. And then y'all met Chris playing niggas with Madden for money. <laughs> Aww. 
We love real bloodline, real ties, oh, and family. Man. Especially people who you can grow with. Facts, nah, yeah, I've been fucking with ever since, honestly. Oh, that's so special. Mm. Where do you see yourself in five years? I've got just a few more questions and I'm gonna let you go. No, nah, you good. Uh, Cause Ted's wings ain't open, so I ain't like, I know. <laughs> Ted, y'all need to fix y'all's hours. It's like, I always come out here to get my hair done and I get my hair done around like one or two, right? And I be done by like three. And it's like, we open at four. Uh, you gotta wait that hour. I'm, I, I don't stay on this side of town, nigga. Once I go back, I'm not coming back. Like, but you know, well, if you don't live on the north side, but I don't you know, live on the north side either. Well, so it's like, nigga. I, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we can't connect it. You know, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> now, what was the question? Where do you see yourself in five years? Uh probably about to shoot my second feature film, and uh, probably somewhere off the coast. Okay. With no iPhone no more, I'll be going to Green Messages. Um, honestly, probably you won't even have nothing else but I say, is there, call and text. Is that a reason? Is there a reason why? Just no. Nah, just I just feel like that's what I, I want to do. I keep my Green Text. I'm a huge Samsung user. Nah, not even Samsung. Oh, not even just no little, smartphone no at all. You want the, the brick? Just a little flip. You a little can call bricky. and text. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a little track phone. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Oh, I'm leaving this here. I'm leaving. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? Just having some. I feel you, a real way to disconnect. Yeah, for real. Like, I only want niggas to call me on my house phone if I have one. Leave me a voice hey, me Email a message. me. <laughs> That's already, a niggas gonna have to get, you can have to email me from. I don't even like my email. It's just so filled up with flim flam. After 2025, <laughs> only way is email. You got the email, I'm gonna check that for sure. Okay, uh, y'all hear him? Check. Gotta, gotta Use your email. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're going to be off the coast shooting your second feature film? Well, hopefully just off the coast living and then shoot my second feature film somewhere. I don't know exactly where it's going to be. Hopefully it's be in Oklahoma, but we'll What see. makes a film a feature film? Uh, the, the long, the how long it is. Mm -hmm. If it's past like, uh, I think like 45 minutes, I think that's when it's a feature film, but anything under 40 is like a short film. And I was going to ask you, um, because I know Stassi Baby is a short film, mm -hmm. And what do you do with all that extra content that you have? Or do you shoot purposefully knowing like, hey, we only gonna have like 40 minutes? I mean, I try to shoot purposely. I try to edit while shooting, not like mm -hmm. physically editing, but like shooting with how I think it should cut. You know, I was thinking, that's funny. I woke up like at five o'clock this morning, just sitting and thinking about like, yo, how I'm gonna edit this first thing? How, what is gonna be the beat and the cuts like, as far as like, like just the, the whole pace of the scene, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I've just been thinking about it. I gotta make a shot list, honestly, that's what I do. That way I ain't gotta come in on the day of, be like, oh, what should we do? Well, this is, yeah, yeah. Any advice you'd give to any young filmmakers out there? Uh, the one thing I can tell you is just keep shooting. Honestly, whatever, what you got, uh, you can shoot with iPhone, but uh, it just depends, you know what I'm saying? What What's the situation? If your budget is iPhone, cool. You going you can make it happen for damn sure. But if you got the budget to use a airy camera or a red camera, definitely do that. You know, get some good lenses. Uh, you know, work with your friends that know how to do shit. Don't do it all by yourself. Don't do it all by yourself and keep consistency. Those are keys. Like we usually get that from everybody. Stay yeah. consistent. Stay consistent. Boy, I figure at this point that should be known. Like right. if you watch anybody in history that does anything great, bro. This is just gonna look, you can go through a book of great people, bond folk, <laughs> and then be like, oh, who is that? Damn, what they do? That was consistent. And you turn the fucking page and do it again. You be like, oh, what they do? Oh, they was consistent. So it's like, it's not a fucking secret, bro. It's not this fucking secret thing that all these people are just are so great. It's like, nigga, they stay consistent, you know? So you're gonna get better, especially if you have passion for it, you know? And don't be motivated by money. You mm -hmm. know, it's cool to get money from your art. That's the ultimate goal. But if you're just doing it for that, it's going to hurt you. <laughs> it's going to hurt every time. Money should never be the motivator. Facts. And you can tell who's doing it for the money versus people who are truly passionate about it. Facts. My final question, um, what would you tell somebody who would find themselves, like, in a writer's block? Like, how do you shake that off? I've been going through some things. <laughs> <laughs> Take all that time. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you just got to keep putting your best foot forward, man. Like, even if you feel like a block or quote-unquote block, mm -hmm. uh, just keep writing until you 
get out of it, I guess. I don't know. Or take some time. It, it all depends on the person. Because me, it depends. He he's not a one size fits all type person. It really yeah. just depends. It on your depends situation. on your situation because it's sometimes like you know fuck this shit. I'm going to do some other shit. <laughs> right. And then I come back to it later, or I might power through it. It just depends on how I feel that day. Some days I just want to lay in bed. Shit, like today, after I eat. Dang, it's rainy shit. out here, y'all. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm gonna go to JB thing. Too. JB has a Dilla and Donuts thing tonight. I'll probably go to that. A Dilla and Donuts. Oh, yeah. Cool. Where's that? Uh, it's on Eastside East Pizza House. Yeah. I still ain't never been there. What? She talking about C? <laughs> no, I said same. Oh, oh damn. Y'all got to take it. a date. Yeah, oh, y'all go. Go ahead and vlog. I feel you. Uh, go ahead and get your vlog on. Yeah, I'm at Eastside Pizza House. Dicky <laughs> Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> It's so embarrassing. Anyway. So embarrassing. Why was I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm only on TikTok because I feel like nobody who I know is on TikTok. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people who I know aren't on TikTok. That's why I'm still on Tumblr because nobody who I know is on there. But I'm still like not trying to be seen these well, days. I, have a talk show. I, I know. Isn't seen. it so ass backwards? Like that if you so do bad. see me, you gotta watch my show. Imagine someone like Oprah was like, "Yeah, I'm trying to do this talk show, but really, <laughs> I don't really want people to see it." It's not about me. <laughs> I Good thing it's not about me. You know, that's why I don't have like a personal Instagram no more. I can't handle it. Just watch the talk show if you want to see you me. You know what you should do? What? Just a suggestion. What? Get somebody else to do your talk show for you. Had the questions. Had a question. Oh, see, look, now, uh, now I'm saying. It's still my talk show. But no, because it's still my talk see, that's show. That's what I'm saying. But it comes, it, the, the price of it is being in front of people, though. So it's like I one of those. in front of people. I'm just saying, you gotta have it grow though. You can't be lit. We gotta, you gotta get it big. You know what I'm saying? Follow talk do show. Follow <laughs> <laughs> talk show. It don't matter what I'm doing. Oh yeah, yeah. No, nah, I feel you on that. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It don't matter what I'm doing personally. I may come back with like a little finsta yeah. or something super in. Yeah, now none of that matters. As long as the talk show got one. Yeah. Honestly, you can have somebody else run the Instagram and stuff. Exactly, and that's that's the main point. I'm trying to drive all the traffic to here. I feel Y'all want to see ass pictures and shit? Too bad they're gone. Follow the talk show. Or just follow Thicky Minaj on TikTok. <laughs> but you can still follow me there. Yeah, no, nah, uh, I met the guy, I don't know if you guys know, Edible OKC, the magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, was, I was talking to him yesterday, and I was like, yeah, we was exchanging contacts. And he was like, yeah, um, I don't have none of that. Because <laughs> we were talking about Letterbox, which is like a, a movie diary, mm -hmm. which I put my movies in, and I like, you know, I follow people Ooh, that I know. That's cute. You should get it if y'all fuck with movies, uh, Letterbox. Um, it's not like social media. All you do is post the movies you watch and send a little review, and mm -hmm. your friends can see it, or you can see your friends. I like that. Um, but he was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't got none of that." He said, "I got it for Edible." He said, "Yeah, I got a, a social media person." You know, I said, "That's the go, honestly." Honestly, fact. I was so then you have to worry about it. This. Right. Yeah. That's why I really want the flip phone. I'm, I'm I feel you on that. Like, just, then you just have somebody that you just make what you gonna make, mm -hmm. send it to the people. They make sure they get pubbed or you know marketed. And, oh, that's all that matters. That's what they do on the higher level anyway. Niggas ain't got this shit on Oprah ain't really on Insta. Hell no. Nah. Oprah ain't really on Insta. <laughs> I mean, the real, the real niggas is on, on it, though. You know, right. when they... But Kendrick, that nigga ain't on He ain't been on that shit since 09, probably. Jay-Z ain't on there in real Hell life. Nah. You know what I'm saying? They got too much other shit to do. Facts, like, man. Then to sit and... What I need to be concerned with other people's opinions or photos for. That's somebody's job. Come to this concert. <laughs> come, come to this there. gallery. That's come all to that this, matters. You know, they only come when it's time to give you something or, you know, present something. Exactly. Right. And that's how I'm trying to be. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead and drop the GoFundMe information so uh -oh. people anywhere can donate. Do you also accept Cash App or uh, are we just primarily doing GoFundMe? I mean, as far as people, yeah, GoFundMe is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go, I think, just go to StassiBabyFilm.com and then it's a tab that says Donut and it'll take care of the rest for you. Uh, but yeah, we just doing go for me because it's honestly it was the easiest thing to do at the time yeah because <laughs> he was asking me i was like oh well yeah i need to have somewhere for you actually can donate yeah um but hopefully you know these companies give us this money so we don't have to rely you know what i'm saying but they go you really just manifest you just sent the word out and it's really fun to come back to you whenever it does you should give us a wave talk exclusive. well <laughs> it's funny because this girl i was at this one meeting this girl she, she was like yeah you already got the money mm. and i was like Okay, cool. So that's the I was like, should I should I not be doing all this work then? No, well, I still got to do the work. Right. No, keep doing that. 
That's nah. gonna fall into your hands. Yeah, I, I believe it too. So it's like it's just a matter of when and mm -hmm. then, you know. I'm super excited. Hopefully, we can come to, um, you know, like little premiere night. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, for we sure. can interview you on your red carpet if you have one or something like that. Something really exclusive because I'm really excited to see this. Um, go ahead and give us the rest of your social media platforms how people can stay tuned in with you. Uh, I mean, if you want to look at me, I guess you can. I really don't post me that much, but. Grand X National, everything, G-R-A-N-D-X National, like the car. And, but really just go follow Stassi Baby Film on Instagram and Twitter and visit StassiBabyFilm.com so you can see what we got going on. You want to be a potential sponsor, I'm down to sit and chat with the person and see what's going on, see how we can help and benefit each other's partners on something that's bigger than us. So yeah, you know, you got me, get at me. All right. Oh, and then spell Stasi for people who can't spell. Stasi, S T A S I, S T A S S I, and that's short for Anastasia. That's cute. Yeah. Watch, watch that be a trend. Mm. Everybody nicknaming Anastasia Stasi. Well, you know, it's funny because I, uh, I know a girl when I was first start writing Stasi, and her name Anastasia. Then I was at this thing, and someone called her Stasi. I was like, oh. Oh. Look at that! Shout out to Anastasia. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you again thank you for, for stopping by the Wave Talk. I hope you enjoyed it and all of our little questions. Oh. Um, yeah, we look forward to keeping up with you, and we'll be at the premiere. Yeah, next time we just probably, I guess we do a little later. We can start like at 3.30. Okay. So 4 o'clock, Tez will be open. <laughs> we might even have it catered here because I know how important it is. Hey, <laughs> next time you got that on tape, so <laughs> next time we do something, that from the if there's no test wings. Strike <laughs> that from the record. We're just kidding. Nah, ain't nothing stricken. <laughs> Thank you again. I appreciate it. No, for sure. It was love. All right, y'all. Stay tuned. We're about to come back with the closing statement. Thank you guys so much. Again, we'd like to give a huge thank you to Ronnie the Filmmaker for stopping by and talking with us chopping it up about his life and all the projects that he has going on. Um, it was a very great conversation and I look forward to his very um, future success. That even makes sense, but I do look forward to his success. Um, as I like to close out, as always, um, I leave with a quote. Um, I saw it on Tumblr, like I get all of my quotes and it says, my vibe is so raw. If I cut you off, that's your punishment. Miss me for life. Now, I feel like it's super like girly, super cliche, but I feel like it's got like a deeper meaning to it, just like across the board. If you have to cut somebody off, you did that shit setting up your own boundaries and you needed to do that for yourself. So if you are setting boundaries and cutting people off in your life and not even just people, activities, bad habits, anything, if you cut them off, make sure you stick to that shit because you are the prize. You so raw, whatever it is can miss you forever. So that is my closing quotes. I want to go ahead and give my shout outs. Shout out to New Wave for No Wave, the home team. Shout out to Music Life for my production team. Thank you so much forever and always. Make sure y'all are following on all social media platforms at The Wave Talk Official, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. I'm not on Twitter, but I'll up the engagement or something. I don't know. Twitter is just so stressful. Um, but yes, make sure y'all come back for another episode of The Wave Talk. Bye.